export credit insurance. Export business has become very complex and highly risky. Insolvency rate is on the increase. Balance of payment difficulties have severely affected the capacity of many countries to pay the import price. In such a high risk situation, export credit insurance is very much helpful for the exporter and the banks who finance the export transactions. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand credit risk, credit risk covering organizations, policy taking procedure. Overseas customers are sought after by exporters from many countries. Competition is getting keener still due to an all-round effort on the part of all countries to increase their exports. Indian exporters have to compete with exporters from other countries not only in respect of quality, price, delivery schedules, etc., but also in respect of payment terms. Their success would depend upon the ability to offer competitive terms of credit to the foreign buyer's term of credit on par with those offered by exporters from competing countries. Risks are inherent on all credit transactions but more so in export transactions. The fact that the buyer may not pay either due to the insolvency or for any other reason exposes the exporter to credit risk. Credit risk may arise even in cases where the buyer's credit standing has been thoroughly investigated. Too cautious an attitude in evaluating buyers may result in loss of hand to get business opportunities. Hence, credit risk is unavoidable, especially in export business. There are more than 40 organizations providing cover for credit risk the world over. They are all members of a union international, union of credit and, in and investment insurers also popularly known as Burn Union. In most countries, these organizations are government controlled though a few of them are privately owned. In India, we have the Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India Limited to cover export credit risks. This is a government of India enterprise. In the very first decade of our independence, the government realized the importance of promoting exports. A number of organizations were set up for this purpose. It was felt that one of the serious handicaps faced by Indian exporters is the risk that they might not get paid for the shipments made by them. In fact, it acted as a serious deterrent to our export efforts. It was in July 1957 that the government of India set up the Export Risk Insurance Corporation of India, ERIC, with its head office in Mumbai. In course of time, the ERIC started providing various guarantees to bankers providing export finance. It was therefore decided in 1964 to rename the corporation as Export Credit and Guarantee Corporation Limited. The covers issued by ECGC can be broadly divided into four groups. Standard policies issued to exporters to protect them against payment risks involved in exports on short-term credit. Specific policies designed to protect Indian firm against payment risks involved in exports on deferred terms of payment services rendered to foreign parties, construction work and turnkey projects undertaken abroad, financial guarantees issued to banks in India to protect them from risks of loss involved in their extending financial support to exporters at the pre-shipment as well as post-shipment stages, special schemes, viz, transfer guarantee meant to protect banks which add confirmation to letters of credit opened by foreign banks, insurance cover for buyer's credit, line of credit, 
overseas investment insurance and exchange fluctuation risk insurance. An intending exporter should fill in a proposal form number 121 available with all ECGC offices and submit it to the nearest office. After examining the proposal, ECGC would send him an acceptance letter stating the terms of its cover and premium rates. The policy will be issued after the exporter conveys his consent to the premium rates and pays a non-refundable policy fee. The premium rates are closely related to the risks involved and depend upon length of the credit, terms of payment, credit worthiness of the buyer and his country, the past record of the exporter. ECGC normally fixes a maximum limit of its liability for shipments in each of the policy years. It is therefore advisable for exporters to estimate the maximum outstanding payment due from overseas buyers at any time during the policy period and to obtain the policy with maximum liability for such value. The maximum liability fixed under the policy can be enhanced subsequently if necessary. The main obligations for the policyholders are declaration of shipments, fixation of credit limit on each buyer and reporting defaults. A claim will arise when any of the risks insured under the policy materializes. If an overseas buyer goes insolvent, the exporter becomes eligible for a claim one month after his loss is admitted to rank against the insolvent's estate or after four months for the due date, whichever is earlier. In case of protracted default, claim is payable after four months from the due date. Claims in respect of additional handling, transport or insurance charges incurred by the exporter because of interruption or diversion of voyage outside India are payable after proof of loss is furnished. In all other cases, claim is payable after four months from the date of the event causing loss. However, in case of exports to countries where long transfer delays are experienced, ECGC may extend the waiting period and claims for such shipments are payable after the expiry of such extended period. Sometimes the buyer does not accept goods or pay for them because of differences over fulfillment of the terms of contract by the exporter, counterclaims or set-off. In such cases, ECGC considers claims after the dispute between the parties is resolved and the amount payable is established by obtaining a decree in a court of law in the country of the buyer. This condition is waived in cases where the corporation is satisfied that the exporter is not at fault and that no useful purpose would be served by proceeding against the buyer. Every claim has to be supported by documentary evidence. Important documents that should accompany the claim forms are Certified copy of the export order Certified copies of invoices Certified copies of bills of lading Copies of the correspondence with the buyer In case of insolvency of the buyer Copy of the letter from the official receiver or liquidator admitting the claim. In case of protracted default, protest note, original of unpaid bills, advice of non-payment received from bank or copy of the plaintiff if a suit has been filed. In case of transfer delays, certified copy of payment advice received from the collecting banker indicating the date on which payment was made by the buyer in local currency. This should also certify that all exchange control formalities necessary for transfer of funds to India have been complied with by the buyer. All claims are paid in Indian rupees through the bank 
which handle the now let us check the progress by filling in the blanks. What can be defined as a loan extended by a financial institution or a consortium of financial institutions to the buyer for financing a particular export contract? The answer is buyer's credit. What do you call the limit up to which claim can be paid under the policy for losses on account of commercial risks? The answer is credit limit. Which risk covers only political risks from the date of contract? The answer is political risk. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Export business has become very competitive and risky. Credit risk is greater in export transactions because reliable information about foreign buyers is difficult to obtain, hence it is difficult to evaluate their credit worthiness. Adverse balance of payment has severely affected the country's capacity to pay the import price. Civil war or other external happenings may also delay the payment of the exported goods. Moreover, there has been a significant increase in insolvency of the buyers. In such a high-risk situation, export credit insurance can be of immense help to exporters and the banks who provide finance for the export business. Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India Limited ECGC is a company wholly owned by the Government of India. It functions under the administrative control of the Ministry of Commerce and is managed by a board of directors representing government, banking, insurance and trade and industry.